requires a lot of revisiting mm -hmm. of different scenes to make sure things are planted correctly. And, and not only that, but if you just write a mystery for the sake of the mystery, it, it becomes uh, not so much boring as just like very academic. So that's why you have to have a character like Emma Trace. You have to have somebody who has some personal thing going on because that makes the character um, engaging to the reader, uh, much more so than if you're just writing, you know, kind of a, an academic uh, kind of recount of what happens in the mystery. The characters really make that plot uh, come alive and engage you into it. Right. I've often said that about Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King's one of my favorite authors, but you know, you stop and think and you say, do I really believe in vampires and werewolves and, and all this strange, you know, the aliens and whatnot? But his characters always capture me and I want to find out if they're going to live or die. <laughs> right. I want to That's find out. I'm so drawn in by his characters. They're so sympathetic that uh, that's what makes the book really live for me. That's so. true. The character really is the book. Yeah. And now I'm going to uh, change the subject a little bit and let's talk about what was your greatest challenge in writing this book? My What's challenge. The hardest part. <laughs> the hardest part for me writing this book was maintaining interest in it over a long period of time. This was something that I learned how to do by doing it. Mm -hmm. It took me, um, I'm almost afraid to say, about 14 years to no, write. I'm... And um, it went through several incarnations. And the first two drafts, made it. I made it about halfway through the book, and I had not laid the foundation correctly. I didn't know the characters well enough, mm -hmm. and I dropped it. Um, so stick to was my biggest challenge. The third time was after I started flying, and the flying itself infused the book with a, a new energy, and it gave my character something very important to deal with besides just solving a crime. Mm -hmm. And um, it provided a lot of energy for the book. And, and it made her human. It made her human. It also... Um, informed the other characters in the book. It brought them to life. The police detective was another character I had a lot of problems with. He was kind of flat. Mm -hmm. He fulfilled his role. He was there. He was talking. I had no problem with dialogue. I didn't know him very well. Mm -hmm. And once I began flying and that entered the book, his character came to life. And there, and I'm not going to give away any secrets about no, him. Don't do that. <laughs> We don't do that. But I would say sticking sticking to it over a long period of time. But I, I think that yours is not an unusual story. I, I wrote my books 14, 15 years before I actually published them. Mm -hmm. So the story sits. And then, of course, I did rewrite before I published them. But uh, I think that's a common story amongst authors, especially the first book. The first book just like, you know, it takes you, the way you described it is perfect in that you had to make the characters live and you had to really be the characters or understand the characters. So is Emma Trace you? Is Emma Trace Toby Speed? No. <laughs> <laughs> she has components of me. Um, I can relate to her a little bit. Uh, she does an awful lot of things that I would never do, which I won't tell you either. <laughs> but um, no, no, no. she has a, a very different upbringing. Her family is quite different from mine. Her circle of friends are different. The situation, the opening situation, which doesn't have to do with flying, but just her circumstances in her life um, are very different from mine. Um, she's an only child. I'm not. Um, she doesn't particularly like children. I have three. <laughs> uh, so there are many differences between us. Sometimes I think that the main character we create is an, is an alter ego of ours, and we imbue them with some of our own characteristics, but some of the things that maybe we would like to be or would like to investigate. Um, because I, uh, the question that's often asked about characters is where do you get these characters from? And uh, I think, I don't know, I draw them from the people I know. And I kind of change characteristics around. And um, my, my best characters are the ones that I, that I know the best. It's true. Mm -hmm. So what was the best part so of writing? Uh, the best part, um, I, well, it's almost the same thing. The best part was really getting to know my characters well and loving them. Um, and there are several characters in the book that I often feel I see driving around. I can kind of <laughs> see LaRue Fustacola driving around Port Jeff in her Jeep. Um, and I can see 
uh, I love that Detective name. Zahn driving around in his Pontiac Firebird. I gave everybody cars in this book, so all the characters have cars. You're um, into um, <laughs> cars and planes. Cars and planes. And <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. Right. Well, I, I believe that some of these things uh, uh, help characterize people. Maybe, and I gave definitely. Emma an apartment that I always wanted for myself. I wanted to live in Port Jeff, and I gave her a kind of a penthouse apartment up on top of an old house where she has windows that look in all directions and she can see out over the harbor and the town and I just um, I wanted to live there so oh, that, that's well that's the best part about writing is creating that world that we would really love to live in how about publishing publishing and marketing I think are the two really challenging parts of writing writing is fun yeah. Writing is, sometimes it's not fun fun, but it, at least it's the better part of this whole story. Have you got any tips? Because we have a, a couple of minutes left. Tips for okay. people about publishing and marketing, new writers. Okay. Um, there are many ways to publish a book these days, self-publishing mm -hmm. and traditional publishing, and I believe both are viable options. For this book, I worked with a small established publisher. Um, uh, well, <laughs> marketing. How are you marketing now? I, social media? I do a lot of social media. Um, mm -hmm. I have an author Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I've started tweeting. Um, and I have a website, tobyspeed.com, where I post the news about my books. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's definitely an important part of the job. Whether you're self-publishing or traditional publishing, it really falls on us authors to do a lot of publicity ourselves. Um, it's not my favorite part of the job. No, well, but, no, it's not mine either, but I find it's time-consuming. Not only time-consuming, but it interferes with um, the writing. I mean, it took me two years to write the third book, and, and there were so many interruptions that I'm now, I'm at the editing stage, and the thing I begged was, please just find the inconsistencies in the book, because it took me so long to write it. But uh, it sounds like you've really got a handle on not only the writing, but the publishing, and you're on your way with marketing. So um, what's, the, what's the next book about, just briefly? OK, uh, the next book is um, a continuation of the story, Death Under the Radar, which gives you uh, the sense that there is going to be some flying in it again. This book is about a retired canine cop who comes back to solve a case. Sounds interesting. So Toby, it was great. Thank you Thank so much for coming. And it was wonderful to talk to you about your flying experiences and your mysteries, because these are things I love too. I enjoyed being here. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome.